Alright, this is another video sponsored by Casio Malaysia. So in this video, I will discuss with you like how to use the new 570EX calculator to solve some uh, progression questions. In this video, I will uh, focus on the sum of the first n term. Yeah, just in case some of the students do not uh, know why sum of the first n term basically it means like you need to sum the, from the first term until the n term you want so in progression topic is uh you have like few formula for it so let's say for arithmetic progression uh sum of the first n term you have something like n over 2 2a plus n minus 1d and same thing for gp like geometry progression you you have two of it one is a uh, 1 minus r power of n over 1 minus r and then the other one will be a r power of n minus 1 over uh, r minus 1 so the difference between like uh, which one you choose is based on like our uh, which r value you have so if this case uh if you choose the first one when your r is less than 1 if you choose the second one when your r is bigger than 1 so yeah you kind of have a, a few formula for for it but the problem is, um, yeah, you kind of need to do manually. So over here, I'm going to teach you like how, if I want to do the sum of the first n term, how am I going to use the calculator here? All right, so in order to understand how to use the calculator, uh, you need to find out a few things first. First thing you need to know what is your first term, which is what is your a value. And this one, you need to know uh, what is your d value. Right, so your d value uh, is a common difference here, and then you can type in your calculator, but not using this formula. Right, so you might ask me if you, if you already have a and d, definitely you can just sub into here to do manually. Yes, you can. So basically, uh, this method is like help you to double check your answer to see whether your for, uh your value is correct or not. So if you are using this formula and your calculator value is the same, that means you know your answer is correct. So so what you need want to do now is a is the first term, which is quite easy, which is seven. So because this uh, sequence starts at seven, so I have my a value, uh, which is seven. And d will be common different. So you can see the common difference between each number is basically plus four, isn't it? So therefore my d value will be four okay if you know your a and d value already then depend how many terms you want to plus them together let's say i want to plus all the four term here it's basically called s4 right if i want to do s4 manually definitely i can do something like 7 plus 11 plus 15 and plus 19 and then i kind of have 52 Right. if I want to use the calculator, because if like four term is quite easy, you can type in the calculator. If let's say I want to sum of the 23 term, then you're not going to do like one by one, isn't it? So therefore, over here, you need to know what is the uh, n term formula for AP, which is A plus N minus 1D. Uh, this formula is given in the exam, so you don't need to worry like you cannot remember the formula because the formula will be given. So what you need to do now is you will sub your a and d into this formula and change your n into the x because the calculator can only key in x right they cannot key in the the n term so you're going to use the sigma button here so you type shift x here do you see the sigma yeah this is a sum or from x uh, from what value to another value and then inside here this brackets uh, you, you're going to insert your formula here which is my a is 7 my a will be 7 because we already got it plus n minus 1 so my n will sub with x here minus 1 close the bracket and then d will be 4 right you just type 4 and then right now if i want to sum from the first term to the fourth term i will just say sum from first term to the fourth term and then i type equal or uh, I believe I should put a multiply here and then I type equal then the calculator will tell me it's 52 so basically you need to sub in your a value here which is 7 and then n you change to x here and then d you just type 4 here then you just type everything into the calculator but the good thing is 
um, what if I do not want to sum from the first term? Because this formula, SN formula, you must always sum from a first term, isn't it? So let's say I only want to sum the second, third, and fourth. So I can just change the x value here into 2. So 2, that means I will only sum the second term, third term, and fourth term. Let's see what happens. I type equal 45, you realize it's just minus 7, right? It's just mi 52 minus 7, you got 45. Basically, it's just sum from second, third, and fourth. So I find this function is very, very useful, especially if you are MS student, you, will, you take the progression because you always have something that you want to sum from the fifth term to the 11th term. And then if you use the SN, you kind of need to use something S11 minus like, like S4. So, so yeah, so yeah, what happens if you have the geometry progression? Basically, the theory is still the same. You need to know what is the TN, the N term formula for geometry progression, which I, I short form, I call it GP. So, which is A R N minus 1, isn't it? So, let's say I want to sum all of these four terms. I want to do S4. Because why I know this is geometry progression, not arithmetic progression? Because you can see the relationship between each number is basically multiply 3, right? If you have the difference between them is multiply or divide is GP. If the difference between them is plus or minus, it will be a AP, arithmetic and geometry. So if GP is even more complicated because you have two SM formula, you need to think like which one to use based on the R value and so on. Of course, you can still use the formula. Of course, in the exam, I would recommend you to use the formula. But then over here, I'm going to teach you some calculator skill. So it's still the same. You need to find out your A value first. So your A value here will be your first term, which is 1. And for GP, we actually use R, stand for common different, uh, co uh, common ratio, which is the same idea with the D, but then in GP, they just use R because it's a ratio. This one is a different. All right, so it's 3 because it's multiplied 3. If divide 3, I would say it's 1 over 3, okay? So now I have my A and R already. So what I want to do now is I would do shift X, and then I go into this one and then I key in my uh, N term formula, but I will insert my A and R here. My A will be one in this case. I will do R multiply my R will be three power. And then N minus one, you need to change your N into the X here. So X minus one. All right, then I tell my calculator I want from first term to the fourth, uh, I want from the first term to the fourth term. Then the calculator will tell me the 40. So they tell me S4 is basically 40. So if you plus manually, 1 plus 3 plus 9 plus 27, you will get 40 as well. But the good thing about that, formu uh, that formula, like just now, is like what I say, if I only want to plus, uh, let's say this is T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. Okay, let's say what is the next term. Next time will be multiply 3 again, right? 81. So if I only want to plus the 4th and 5th term, then I can just simply change my value x here. I can change it to, okay, I want plus from x start from 4 to the 5th term. Then the calculator will tell me it's 108. So you try to plus 27 with 81, you are getting exactly 108. Alright, so yeah, so I find this uh, Sigma feature is very, very useful. All right, and I find it even more useful if you in the exam, you see the question like this, which is a recurring decimal. Because in SPM, uh, in order to solve uh, this formula, you kind of need to use the formula uh, sum of infinity, which is uh, A over one minus R. Okay, so yeah, definitely you will need to, same thing, you need still need to find out what, what's your A value and what is your R value and so on and then sub into this formula and got the fraction. So over here, I'm going to teach you how to use these sigma patterns to do the recurring decimal. So first thing is you need to like break this one into the sequence. All right, so uh, basically I know 0 0.242424 is actually equals to 0 0.24 plus I take out these two number and then substitute into the zero uh, with the zero 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 two four plus zero point zero 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 two four and then continue if I want to plus it can be uh, another six zero here two four 
and so on. Alright, so because this pattern, if you add all this number, you're actually getting back exactly the same number here, and then it makes sense. So therefore, from here, at least I know my first term, my a is 0 0.24. And I want to know my r is actually quite easy, because I know basically it's divide 100, right? Divide 100 in math, we actually call it multiply 1 over 100. Because, okay, how am I going to get the divide 100 or 1 over 100 here? Actually, it's quite simple. You know, you get r, just use the second term minus the, uh, divide the first term. So I can just use 0 0.0024 uh, divided by 0 0.24. And then I will get 1 over 100. So now I know my R value is 1 over 100. All right, so what I will do is I use back the TN formula, which is A, R, N minus 1, isn't it? Okay, but the problem is for recurring decimal, you, you will sum until infinity. This is the reason why you will use the sum to infinity formula. But in the calculator, there's no way you type in the infinity, right? So what you can do here is, okay, I will still use back the same symbol. All right, my A value right now is 0 0.24. And then multiply my R value, your A, R, N minus 1, right? My R value is 1 over 100. So I can just type 1 over 100. And then I put a power n minus 1, so which is x minus 1. Alright, so in order to do this, right, I will tell my calculator sum from first term to 100 term. Yeah, because infinity, right, you can put any very big number also can. Even though you don't need so big, you sum to 50 also can. I think 20 should be fine also. Yeah, you can use any number, but don't use a number which is too small, like 5 or, or like 4. Then you will get a not so accurate answer. So over here, let's use 100s. Okay, so I when I type the equal, you realize the calculator will actually simplify for me into 8 over 33. So which is the answer for this one? How do I know this is the correct answer? I can type a standard form to decimal. You can see it's 0 0.24242424. So yeah, what if I change my value? I don't want so big, I change to 20. I believe I will still get the fraction as well, which is 8 over 23, which is 0 0.24242424. All right, so this is like how to use this uh, sigma patterns to actually solve for AP, GP, and recurring decimal. I hope you find this video helpful. So if you are interested to buy this calculator, I will share the Lazada link at my description below. The link will bring you to the Casio flagship store because right now, uh, the Casio Malaysia are doing the promotion. Whoever buy this calculator from them, they will actually free you a Casio L file. Uh, I believe this file is waterproof. So this is how you insert the paper into the L file. I believe you know what is L file. And at the same time, if you insert the promotion code, which is my name, uh, I will share at the description below as well. They will give you another 5 ringgit discount for the calculator. Yeah, I guess that's all for this video. Yeah, if you have any question, please post at the comment below or else I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.